that's Okay, so my name is Rudy Napolitano. Can you hear? Um, I'm from Marina Del Rey, California. Uh, I'm a member of the Sprocket Rocket human-powered uh, bicycle. Um, I got a phone call maybe three weeks ago from the guys who were already uh, assigned seats in the machine, and they said that a seat had opened up, and uh, would I be interested in, in getting involved in the project and coming out to Battle Mountain? And uh, I said yes, obviously. And uh, so our third day in, we're trying to break uh, the record that was set at 63 miles an hour, I believe, for multi-rider, multi-tracked machine. Um, we're getting close, but we're still trying to find about three miles an hour. So, yeah. Never done this before. I've been uh, racing bikes for maybe 15 years. All the guys that have seats are bike racers, and we all know each other from racing. Um, but this is the first time we've been in in this in this bike. What was the experience with that? It's so sort of the first question on the uh, you know do you want to partake interview is how are you with tight spaces? It's very very tight, very claustrophobic. Um, not as much air as you might like because the more vents you have the less aerodynamic it is so it's a it's an intense experience you know and it's a seven minute effort it feels like an hour um but we all enjoy it that's why we're here that's really awesome you know what you remind me of who's that what do you think i'm gonna say i don't know benedict cumberbatch who's that you don't know who he is no he's He's, um, he played Doctor Strange. I gotta look him up. Yeah. Benedict Humperback? Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. Yeah, and he's played in the, the movie Imitation. But anyways. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit of... But, uh, that's cool, man. This yeah, is, yeah. So you race like kind of cycling? Road racing, yeah. How does that work out? Like, I'm, well, it's a completely different dynamic than this you're in a group of people on your own bike and you're using drafting a lot um you know you have freedom to sort of go where you want to go within the race with this thing you're completely locked in you know to this very restricted position and uh you know it's a straight line and it's all about timing and not just timing of the machine but timing of the riders you know we're all riding in the same pedaling cadence you know on the same chain and so to be able to time that not only that with the within the five riders but to enter this speed zone where you're at your max and you're going to be going your fastest like it's it's a lot of you know there's a every time we do a run we learn you know so we've got maybe eight more runs to try to break this record how much what's the record again the record we're trying to break is 63 miles an hour. 63. Yes. You guys did 60? We did just under 60. But there's that, you know, exponentially as you go faster, the wall of resistance exponentially goes up. So our hurdle is right about at 60, where we're not able to punch through. And it, you know, clearly it's, it's the hurdle to break because the guys that have the record just got past it by three miles an hour. You know, we're right there knocking on the door. That was Monday. The first run that you guys did this week was Monday. Was Monday. Today we actually posted a faster time or a faster speed going through the speed traps, but the qualifying times to get into the night runs have been increasing because everyone's getting faster. Oh. So even though our time, our speed was the fastest today, we didn't qualify for the night runs, which is fine because we're all tired. We've been doing two a days. So. We've got a couple things we're going to try. We have our engineers doing a bunch of things to the bo the body of the machine to try to help us with aerodynamics. But That's, this is this blew me away. I was this one, scared. right? Yeah. I've never seen anything like this. So I had didn't know what to expect either because this was my first intro into this culture was hopping in this thing, and then when we came here, like you could clearly 
it stands out like all these other bikes are two wheels and they're maybe six seven feet long this thing's over 40 feet long and weighs 800 pounds it's got seven wheels it's got eight wheels i believe four in the back and four in the front it's a totally different beast you know so how, many, how much time did you get to prepare so i feel like the fitness part the pedaling part we've all been preparing for 15 years but the timing part of it the sitting in the machine and learning about the inertia this thing has so much weight that it's it picks up speed slowly and getting in sync with our teammates that was all a very last minute thing we've been working on it for maybe a month i've only been in this thing maybe four times you know, so it's it's insane. So I have to ask, have you guys crashed? Us personally, no, but the engineers took it out one time and it was a little bit windy and the wind popped one of the doors open and then that acted as a sail and the whole thing went off the road. And it did really well. We have five point racing seat belts on the inside. We have a roll bar that goes over your head. So the thing crashed and these guys were totally unscathed at 65 miles an hour. I think they crashed, which is pretty intense. How did the owner, how did you get into something like this? The story I heard was uh, the owner builder is also a cycling enthusiast and was aware of this culture um, and on a mountain bike ride with one of his buddies, they were like, there's no reason why a five-man vehicle can't be faster than a one-man vehicle. And this was years ago, maybe 10 years ago. And that was the seed that was planted. And ever, you know, since then, I think that took them four years to build this, you know? So since then, it's been a, con a concept and then it eventually became a project, a physical project. And then eventually, you know, they put it on the road and started looking for riders. And that's where we are now. So, yeah. The last time one of these was brought here was in the 70s, I think. The last time a five-man machine was brought to Battle Mountain. Actually, that's not true because they've only been coming here for 20 years. So, I, I, the last time one of these ran for a record was in the 70s. I'm not sure where they did it, what track, what piece of land, what road. But this is the first time one of these has been seen since then going for a record. So, everyone's like, you know curious as are we is that the world, record? world record for this class yeah 63 miles an hour it's a lot harder than you think because this thing has so much weight to it to get it up to speed it's like you really have to time your effort and not blow all your watts and in sync and then gradually push it the, the analogy that i would make is pushing a, a, a car that's dead you don't just start pushing all at once, right? You wait for it to move a little bit, and then you push a little bit more. And as the car starts rolling, you push more and more. Because if you go into it all the way from the beginning, you might move it, but you're going to lose all your energy. You're wasting all your energy. It's the same thing with this thing. Like if we go right out of the gate at 400 watts, it's not going to move any faster than if we come out at 150 watts. Literally, it's not going to go any faster. So you have to figure out, okay, when is it... We're just, you know, bleeding out our power, or is this efficient? And so how do you know to put out the power? Every, that's the thing. That's the whole thing. You have five miles to get your, your machine up to speed, and then you enter this speed trap. And that's the whole thing is how, you know, everyone, every machine is different on how they're going to get themselves to that point where they want to get timed. You know, you have five miles to get it together. We've tried everything. We came out really hard one day and tried to maintain. We went totally relaxed into the, you know, for the whole first four miles and then hit it at mile four. There's you know, numerous ways you could approach it. And then the wind, well, the wind's not so much because there's, after a certain number of watts of wind, the run is illegal anyway. So the, the, the idea is that the wind isn't going to help you. So today we had a tailwind. So I think all the runs were illegal, but we still came out. And what does that mean? It means that if let's, I think it's three knots. If there's more than three knots of, of wind, you can, you could take a run, but if you put up a fast speed, it's not, it doesn't qualify as a record breaker because the idea is we don't know if the wind helps you. 
So it has to be less than three knots, and I could be wrong, whatever the number is, of wind for this for your run to be considered as a record. So even though today was blowing like 15, 14, 15 knots, everyone came out because I think we all we all consider it a practice run. Like you have to practice, right? So whether or not it's going to count, you still get to practice your timing. You get to practice the whole thing, you know? So, yeah. Do you do this um, cycling as a hobby or is it? I, uh, so I work for a tour company. We give tours on bikes. I've also been a professional racer. I've also been a coach. Um, you know, this is just another way to, to stay sort of, to stay active in, in the cycling community. You know, it's something to put on the resume. It's a story to tell. So, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've never experienced this world and now I'm here. When I first talked to some people, it was just alien to me. Yeah. And now I'm like, this is really cool. Like, yeah, yeah. And if you, so you'll notice that if you talk to a cyclist, if you interview, interview me, I'm a cyclist, interview an engineer next. And, and you'll see that the, the dialogue or, the, or the, the way that's conceptualized, you know, the difference between a cyclist and an engineer is completely different. Like, the engineer will be telling you about, like, the importance of you know decreasing drag and how polishing this part of the thing makes you like it's crazy how much you could sort of get involved in the little idiosyncrasies of the sport of the I think it for us for me being just the power I, I like I'm interested in what they're doing but for me i just want to be able to perform for them so that their efforts are you know don't go unnoticed you know we we want to break records for us but we also want to break records because these guys have been spending four years building this bike so for me as long as i can concentrate on putting out power and doing my job i'm not so you know i don't really need to know what they're doing or or you know the finer points of the engineer side, like it interests me, but as long as I'm doing my job, I'm happy, you know. I hope, I hope that's all right. Yeah.